morphologically. You take away the snow, before the water. It, uh, it's very much reminiscent of some of the gullies that we've been seeing recently on valley walls and canyon walls and crater walls of Mars. On Mars there seems to be indicative of recent flow of water near the margin surface. These are gullies that look so much like and want to understand how these work. Where does the water come from? Is it underground water coming out from now up there? Or is it more likely, as it seems here, the result of the melting of lingering snow? Uh, this is what we're trying to understand. And with Charlie, we're also looking at the biological potential of these sites. Is there an enhancement of life near these gullies compared to the outside? Because that's something we might want to be looking out for also on Mars. What is the, the biological significance of these gullies on Mars? So, many questions to answer. Right here, in our pristine drinking water. Aren't you curious what killed the lemming? Um, I guess it probably, it may have just died and been washed down, or it could have drowned. Uh, it's unlikely to have drowned in such a small volume, it sort of jumped onto a rock and run out. So I suspect it's probably dead and been washed down, maybe from the top of that plateau. Yes. Into the gully when during the early season, it came floating down, just got jammed in between two rocks. Mm -hmm. So what's the significance of this gully to you? Um, I'm interested in looking at the, the biology, the fact that there's um, more abundant liquid water here compared to some of these other areas outside the gully. Uh, it has a link into Pascal's work on gullies on Mars and looking, uh, I suppose my interest from that point of view is the uh, possible enhancement of life in a gully. So it would be useful just to get some data on numbers of bacteria in and outside of gullies to tie it all together and maybe do a uh, study on possible implications for life on Mars associated with gullies. Having completed our explorations, we're back inside the helicopter and we're ready to get off again. Uh, the pilot is not a member of the expedition, but uh, he's from an outside service. Uh, we're essentially renting this time, a certain number of hours that uh, allows us to explore the islands and, and see some of the geology objects uh, out within the range of our ATVs. You see uh, Thomas Lee Inlet here, uh, part of that uh, still mostly frozen uh, sound between the, uh, the islands. We're going to be heading south and, and going right back to the base camp. Uh, there would have only been a few feet of snow, probably at most here. A lot of it would have blown away and all melted by the end of uh, June. Uh, we now have a pretty exciting uh, passage here. We're going to be going uh, right over that cliff. And with this uh, bubbled helicopter, you'll notice that I'm able to look uh, just down below my feet and, uh, as if I'm hanging right over the cliff that we were just uh, hiking up a moment ago. You see that interesting pattern here again, this sound looking a little bit more towards the, the left. Uh, mostly frozen uh, still and a little rain so in this area. As we uh, head further south now, as we're going right back to the, the uh, base camp and the crater, you see there's a lot of snow in the ravines where the wind is blown in. And there's the hab now on Ames Ridge, the Mars Research Station. And now we're coming right into the base camp. You see the main tents on the left and the personal tents now. We're going to come in fairly closely to them. And my tents, that gray tent on the bottom, we'll circle around and be able to get another view. You see those white tents on the bottom? That's those little latrines in our main uh, work tents and the mess tent. Final time, we see the fortress and the airstrip, and the helicopter comes in for a landing. 
that completes a very pleasurable morning with a couple of my friends here on Devon Island to Thomas Lee Inlet.